Hi everyone, Lucy here with a much requested video on how to increase your reorder rate on FAIR. This is of course very important on any channel really, but especially for those of you on FAIR in America and others that have the top shop functionality on FAIR, which hasn't reached us in Europe yet, but apparently the reorder rate is very important for gaining top shop in the next quarter for your shop. So I've had a few people reaching out asking, how do we increase our reorder rate? Have I got any ideas? And the answer is yes, I have plenty of ideas. So I'll run you through them and you can see if there's any that are worth implementing for your business. I have 10 ideas that I'm gonna run you through. Some might be more relevant to you than others, but all worth a shot. And all of them, I like to think are tried and tested by us. Uh, they are things that I have genuinely seen make a difference to our reorder rate. The first one is make a good first impression with those orders. So someone has come to you, they've placed an order, they're receiving a product. What impression are they getting of you and your business? Are you making yourselves a worthy partner that retailers really want to work with again? Is your shipping good enough? Is your packaging good enough? In fact, is your product good enough? Is this something that retailers actually want to stock in, in their shop? Are your product listings accurate? So are they receiving what they're actually seeing online? because no one will rebuy a bad product. Most people won't rebuy something that they saw on a product listing and then is different from what they expected to get. You really have to build up that trust with someone to get the rebuys in. Making a good first impression is really important with your retailers. My second point is be the best communicator. Reply same day to your retailers, it's really important. Don't give them any reason to doubt that you're anything but an excellent brand to work with. My third point is keep them up to date with relevant information. This is about being straight to the point and useful for your retailers, such as sending email newsletters that have got product updates, new ranges, share your product inf information, any sales tips, point of sale stands, just anything that's really gonna help them sell your product. My fourth point is send samples with the order. So if they've only ordered a subset of your range, maybe they're testing the waters and they've ordered maybe five out of a range of you know, hundreds of products, throw in some free samples of other products that you think would work for them. Similar to this me method, um, but my fifth point is about sending stuff in the post to these retailers. So you've got their address, you've sent something to them. How about you try sending them some samples in the post? So they might have ordered from you in March and then you haven't heard anything. Have you got a range coming out for Christmas? Maybe it's worth sending a Christmas catalog um, samples as well. If there's someone that you really want to convert into a repeat buyer, then sending samples might be well worth the investment. Number six is do take part in fair summer and winter markets. Promote that you're doing this ahead of time. I've done some other video content on how we've got along in our fair and summer markets and strategies that we're using this, this year. So I'll be sure to link them below. Have a look on the rest of our channel as well. But retailers seem to expect brands to be taking part in these now. They might use it as an opportunity to rebuy from you. Use the discounts that are available, set tiers, reward retailers from like rebuying with you. Number seven is regularly email your retailers and do it outside of the FAIR platform. I think FAIR has got too saturated now, so there's way too many emails coming out from that platform to the point where they're now limiting it, so retailers might not even get the emails that you're sending. And they're also receiving too many from FAIR. Um, so I've spoken to retailers in person at a trade show, spoken to them about FAIR, and the general consensus was, yes, I've heard of them, of course I have, because I have thousands of emails in my inbox about FAIR. So do your own emails out outside of the platform and send regular, useful, tailored content. And number eight is along the same vein, and this might seem counterintuitive, but I actually think you should talk about FAIR less. Obviously, I talk about FAIR all the time, especially on this platform, but it's because you guys want to hear about it and learning how to grow on the platform. But in our own channels, we talk about it to the retailers that we know use like FAIR and use it. So we'll say, great, this is on FAIR, off you go, order. We'll use the invoicing tool or whatever it might be. It's a great channel for us. It's still our biggest wholesale channel. But in our emails, we're talking about the product and the brand and the charities and just anything else that's going on. And sure, we have call to actions that say, shop on fair, here's our latest range on fair. And we, we do push people towards it, but our branding is ours, all our imagery is ours. It's not, we're not plastering fair all over it. We're encouraging people to shop through fair, but ultimately it's our email, it's our product, it's our branding. And I think that is working better for us because 
retailers are getting a bit tired of fair and I, I think they're still liking it and using it and it's definitely a huge wholesale channel but to stand out you need to stand out because it's your brand not because it's fair because being on fair is no longer a unique thing number nine is a more tricky one but really think about adding more products for one the fair platform likes it we know that they push retailers out there who have new products so they'll show new ranges to retailers if, you, if you've added them and i have heard of people going around and deleting products of fair and re-adding them so they get that boost of like new products added someone asked asked me if we do that absolutely not we don't do that that. for me that's very like gamey tactics um, that's very backhand that's one that's going to annoy retailers because if they're getting a thing saying new products and then they're not new they've got them stocked in their shop what are they going to think um, and two I'm assuming fair is going to wise up to this and start removing people that are doing it because it's not a legit tactic so I don't recommend doing that but I do recommend adding new products especially if you've got a small range I mean, I know it does depend on what product you've got, but if you take us, for example, we're selling socks. If we had a range of just 10 socks and we added no new products a year or maybe one or two a year, ultimately we're not going to be a good partner for a retailer because they want to see fresh products coming in. They want to see new ranges and exploring with new patterns and styles and things like that. So we do see a correlation between adding new ranges and sales it's you know and I know it's hard for some people especially if you're like a handmade product or you're a very unique product that's hard to build out the range I get that it's not that adding new products to the range isn't always the easiest but if you've got a product that is like ours and you benefit from a bigger range then do consider adding new products to the range and actually it can be that you're removing products on the range that are selling slower um, or you bring in limited edition products. It doesn't mean that you have to be in stock of everything all the time, but definitely having an expanding range and showing retailers that you're adding to it will help with your reorder rate because they might not want to buy new things from you if all you've got is old products. And my 10th point is an idea that I'm exploring and kind of padding out at the moment, but I've, I'm calling it that you want to have a supplier ecosystem strategy. And I am aware that that sounds really corporate because what does that even mean? So bear with me here, but I really think there is a power in your retailers being at the center of your like ecosystem. And then there's like a halo of good things that you're doing around them. So yes, you've got your wholesale channels, you've got fair and anchor store and create and maybe you've got your own wholesale website as well so they're seeing that side of it you've also got your email marketing your social media your branding your personal branding your trade shows your product just everything else that's happening around them is not just one thing so yes i'm doing videos about fair but fair is just one part of the strategy i think there is so much else that falls around it that helps with your fair strategy so your reorder rate in particular is not just about having good SEO on FAIR or optimizing your shop page on FAIR. I think those are really important, but they all fall part into this like ecosystem you're creating for the retailer to be at the center and feel nice and warm and happy at the center of it. And you've got a halo of success around them. And I'm really noticing that with everything we're doing because we have a really active, beautiful Instagram account that's created and on brand and we share our retailers and they always tag me and stuff. If you have a really quiet Instagram, that is not helping with your fair. And I think people think of it as too separate. They think, right, I'm gonna put everything I can into fair and grow that. But if your Instagram is dead, then it doesn't help with it. And I'm not, I'm not saying that it's gonna completely block you from sales because you might have done really well without Instagram. But what I'm saying is I am noticing having all of it work in cohesion with each other is really helping with our overall strategy. And there's other stuff that we are adding to this strategy as well and this kind of ecosystem where we're having calls with our retailers and then we notice that without fail, if we have a call with a retailer and, and speak to them about their needs, they will reorder that week, if not the same day. So we've added that in trade shows as well if we go to a trade show and we see a retailer the likelihood of them reordering is very high because they've seen us in person maybe it's the first time they're meeting us but you have that connection with them so you see what i mean this is something i'm playing with at the moment that we have this ecosystem we have the retailer at the heart of it and all our retailers at the heart of it and we're trying to grow and be this amazing brand around them that they feel supported by and that can see we're bringing out new products we're doing good things and it's all feeding into one place and i think it's the same for b2 
B2C as well. We have our B2C customers. There's slightly different channels around it, but it's all working towards it. LinkedIn is another one, for example. I share out success all the time on LinkedIn and I've not necessarily got all my retailers on there, but it's that halo of success that people are seeing. Oh, Bear Kind's doing good things. Look at like Lucy was at a trade show. Look what she did that week. Um, I think it's all helping. So I really do advise that you take a look at your overall strategy and see that you're touching base with everything. Um, I know it's overwhelming, but I would say that just try and focus on a few to improve at a time. For example, TikTok for us is dead. Like I have not had time to be on TikTok and actually do some work on that channel. I try now and then, but it's just exhausting. And I know you have to put so much work into making TikTok work. So maybe my feedback for myself is to start working on the TikTok channel. But I'm just saying I've seen from how we've improved our emails and our Instagram and shouting out on LinkedIn and now adding in trade shows that it's all coming together in a nice little ecosystem um, and it's worked wonders for our wholesale channel. So it's not just fair in isolation, sorry, it's also all these other things. And I know you come on this channel and hope for kind of silver bullets and quick fixes and sometimes there are, there's some small things that you can do, but ultimately it is hard work um, and if you want to improve your wholesale channel, get ready to work hard. And I'm sorry if that's not the answer you wanted to hear. Uh, more hard work, but we're running businesses here and we know that it is not easy. However, that being said, there is something we can do to help because we have our own agency now where we can run your FAIR account for you. So if you need help growing your FAIR account, it's just becoming too overwhelming, we can step in and help. So I'll put some links below about our services that we're now offering. Very exciting. It's been awesome working with our first clients already and I'd be happy to have a conversation with you about potentially onboarding you and running your FAIR account for you. So get in touch. And if you found this video useful, please drop us a like. We will continue to bring out free content on how you can grow your FAIR account. So please do subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video.